Hey, podcast listeners, welcome to this week's episode of Lisey's All the Things podcast. Today, we're discussing the importance of collecting and presenting critical digital marketing analytics for law firm management. Having the right analytics is the most crucial aspect of making data-driven decisions. Digital analytics provide valuable insights into how clients interact with your website, marketing campaigns, and other online assets. By presenting this data effectively, you can help law firm leaders understand their target markets better, optimize their resources, and ultimately drive growth. We'll explore why it's essential to have meaningful data and how it can help executives make informed decisions that impact the firm's bottom line. So let's dive in and learn how to present digital analytics to law firm leadership effectively. Hi, everybody. Robin Addis here, Chief Operating Officer and Chief Marketing and Business Development Officer at Lisi. I am joined today by my esteemed colleague, Dan Martin. Say hi, Dan. Hey, Robin. How's it going? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. Um, so for our uh, loyal following, you are going to be familiar with the fact that this is our once monthly podcast exclusive episode of All the Things. And this month, Dan and I decided to change things up a little bit and have a conversation about something that he and I find very exciting, uh, which is law firm marketing analytics. And I am not being sarcastic. We actually, in a very nerdy way, talk marketing data and analytics for fun on the yes. regular. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but Dan posed an interesting question to me not too long ago. How could we talk about marketing analytics from a law firm leadership perspective, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, I'm going to ask Dan to sort of give us a little bit of a background, you know, in terms of what are we actually talking about when we talk about platforms and the analytics and what is the data that we can get out of it? And then we're going to talk about what law firm leadership is actually trying to understand, which many of us probably know what they're trying to understand. But I want to talk about a little bit of a different way to approach the conversation um, from a leadership perspective based on my experience. And um like with all conversations where I get a little bit nerdy, God only knows where this is going to take us. Right, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, okay, Dan, talk to us a little bit about the importance of digital, digital analytics and, and kind of what we're talking about. The genesis of, that, of this idea was, um, Robin, you and I have worked together uh, in a previous life uh, at mm -hmm. a large law firm in Center City, Philadelphia, and I always thought it was interesting how you were kind of the close to the leadership. You were getting, you know, their feedback on what they wanted to see. And you were coming to me and the people on my team saying, how can we get to the answers to these questions that leadership is asking? So that's how I wanted to frame it. You know, how are we, what is our website doing for us as a law firm? How are we getting leads? What is our SEO efforts doing for us? What is our email campaigns doing for us? All those legal alerts that we send out on a regular basis, are they actually moving the needle in terms of getting new clients or improving our relationship with current clients? What is our webinars doing for us? Is that getting us more clients? Is it improving current relationships? So that's kind of the genesis of the idea and the framework that I wanted to operate in today, if that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I mean, the the interesting thing about those conversations and even in preparing for this podcast today Dan and I had this chat a little bit too the interesting thing is that from my perspective in a leadership role um, and as a participant in those leadership level conversations yes those are the questions that they're asking but are are those the right questions right? right like are those the right questions and does the data does the do the answers to those questions actually give actionable intelligence um, and information that can help us pivot and change strategies or you know make informed decisions moving forward so i'll i'll get into the weeds with that in short order here i'm sure but let's talk a little bit about from your perspective so dan you are 
as you said, we worked together at a law firm previously, and and now I've uh, brought you over to the dark side on the agency <laughs> life. <laughs> um, what are you, and but you have a lot of experience with marketing, digital marketing, data, and analytics. I mean, for goodness sakes, you what you just got your MBA in digital marketing our master's in digital marketing, what, like last year, two years ago? Uh, yeah, graduated, I graduated December 2022. Right. So so as nerdy and as excited I might be, you're really committed to it. <laughs> yeah, <for> so, sure. <laughs> so talk to us about, you know, just sort of like level set. What are some of the key analytics and the KPIs that you find most valuable to track and why? So I think that's question requires a little bit of, of unpacking in terms of what are the tactics that we're doing? Because then yeah. if so, let's say, for instance, if we're, if we run a law firm at a smart and law firm, right, and we want to do SEO I'm search engine optimization. My name first on that, by the way. Oh, you know, <laughs> alphabetical first. So. <laughs> uh, so let's say that you and I want to, you know, our, we want our firm on the first page of Google. Google. I'm sure you've heard that before. We want to be on the first page of Google. Yeah. Um, so we would do, you know, search engine optimization. And for, you know, for that particular one, I might look at, okay, where are we ranking for specific terms? So let's say our law firm was a personal injury firm. So where are we ranking for terms like personal injury lawyer, Philadelphia, right? Or where are we ranking for terms that are important to us? That's one that I would find, you know, valuable in terms of presenting up. Um, another one would be, you know, how are people getting to our website? It's great that people who know us and refer clients to us, they already know us. They probably have us bookmarked or they type our address into the address bar in their browser. But I want to see that organic traffic growth, right? I want to see the people that don't know us or don't necessarily know how to get to us immediately. I want to see that organic traffic growing uh, month over month and year over year and things like that. So you're lessening the people that are directly coming or, you know, the people that are bookmarked and you're getting people who have found you because you've written good content because mm -hmm. they're finding your attorneys via videos that you've posted that are being indexed by Google and things like that. If we're talking about something like uh, if we're going to run a paid pay per click advertising campaign, search advertising campaign for our law firm, certain metrics might be what's our return on ad spend or what is, you know, our CPC, what's the average CPC that we're spending are we getting enough impressions for the amount that we're spending? Are we always showing in the top? Um, are we? Are there? Are our competitors showing above us more often? Like, what's the percentage split there? So those are examples of like different, I would say, channels and then metrics underneath or KPIs underneath those channels you could uncover. I'm sure we could do an entire four part four part series on here's this specific marketing channel and here's our tactics and here's what the KPIs should be, but you know, I don't want to, don't want to spend two hours of everybody's time going into the weeds on that. I'm well, side note, I, Dan and I also have a conversation sometimes about like, what's the right length for a podcast. I would argue that a really meaty, you know, dive into a, a topic is what I would prefer, but agreed. I don't think our audience is here for two and a half hours of data nerds, right, Dan? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Well, so, okay, so we've got a lot of information and we have a, we have, ideally we have access to a lot of data that's coming out of the different platforms and tools and so on and so forth that we use. Where I think it transitions from information and results to more of answering the questions that leadership is really looking for is being able to take a step back from that data and see the forest for the trees, as mm -hmm. I like to say. Um, and it's I, I joke sometimes that I can look at a spreadsheet, rows and columns of data and texted numbers. And it's kind of like <laughs> that scene from A Beautiful Mind, where like, <laughs> you know, he's looking at all the numbers and it sort of just like pops out at him. Yeah. I, I, I so enjoy doing it. And I do it so much that I can start to look and see the trends or if I pivot on the data, what is that really telling me? That's that's the first question. What is the data really telling me? I know you hear me ask this question all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and what is it indicating? Is it validating my expectations or sort of my theory or is it telling me something? Am I discovering something new? Mm -hmm. um, 
And that gets us to, you know, there is kind of this big question, and you you teased on this a little bit in terms of some of the metrics and the KPIs, but really law firm leaders want to know if there's a return on their marketing investment. I've had this conversation a lot over my career. ROI, especially for B2B firms, can be this, I called it once in a presentation, like the great white white whale of marketing. Um, <laughs> it's like Moby Dick, right? It, it's yeah. very elusive. But in order to identify marketing ROI, you have to identify specifically what are the data inputs that you are calculating, you know, bringing into the calculus and then, you know, put that through the ROI formula to sort of see what it results in. Um, I do have a very specific example and it, this is talk about great white whale or a unicorn or whatever mythical creature you want to talk about at the firm where you and I both worked at the uh, with one of the groups with whom you worked frequently. Um, they did a webinar that resulted in a client acquisition. So we were very easily in this one case able to identify. Okay, here's all the attorney time and their you know billable rate. Here's all the attorney time that went into preparing for this webinar. And here is the, um, I, basically that was it. It was really just time and prep preparation because there weren't other external costs. And then calculating that against the projected revenue from the engagement and from the client. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and able to identify the ROI. That is my very favorite example, but I always like to give that with a huge asterisk. Like that is so rare yeah. <laughs> because as we know, you know, it's time and it's, um, you know, developing a, a business relationship with a client in any professional services industry does take time and multiple touches to actually get there. But okay, I digress. I'm going down a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> But here, here's the biggest thing that I want to talk about. And Deb Ruffins, who is um, the chief, I believe her title is the chief marketing and business development officer. Um, and I believe she's at Perkins Coie. I'm going to double check that before this goes live. <laughs> she gave a presentation at the Marketing Partner Forum back in January. And part of that was talking about leading and lagging indicators um, to help us sort of identify firm perform firm performance. And so I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that's a great place to, if we're saying, you know, if the question of this podcast is what are law firm leaders really looking at to help them make business decisions? I think those leading and lagging indicators are a, a great first place to start. So starting with lagging indicators. So those are some of the things that you had mentioned. A lagging indicator is an output measurement. It reports past results um, of the efforts that have already taken place. And this happens to be where I think a lot of leaders tend to focus, but they can take a long time to shift. Lagging indi indicators can take a long time to shift. They can be hard to attribute to specific advanced actions. So mm -hmm. law firm leaders might ask questions like how much was produced, how many people attended event at the event, um, you know, how many people RSVP'd, blah, 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 blah. But lagging indicators are triggered by some event that has already occurred and are typically uh, measured against marketing KPI. So that is where, th that doesn't mean that this information's wrong to look at, but I think that the where you shift from a, from a performance sort of measurement outlook to a leadership strategy outlook is then the shift to leading indicators. And I'll finish my monologue in a second, I promise. But <laughs> a leading indicator is a predictive measurement. So that a leading indicator provides a benchmark when if it's met is indicative of your ability to meet the KPIs you've set. So for example, law firm leaders might ask questions like what systems or processes can I implement to achieve the goals to leading to more predictable success? How can I, ha what can I make happen today? What organization can I set up today or infrastructure so that we have the tools and resources that we need in order to be able to measurably increase our, our revenue ultimately. What are the, some of the skills that the team can improve to achieve our, the results we're looking for? And leading indicators are the day-to-day -day business activities that lead to the goals. So they are what drive business performance and success and make future results more predictable. Okay. So 
Dan, <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to uh, I'm going to admit that when you and I were talking about this, it's it's not something that I think is commonly discussed, especially in in law firm marketing departments, right? Like th- this was sort of a new term, you know, new phrasing for things that we've certainly talked about, but to think about them in terms of leading and lagging indicators, well, don't you think? Definitely a different kind of language to speak about. You know, I, I thought of an, I've heard an analogy of this saying, you know, think about if you're in a car, your, your lagging indicators are what's in your rear view mirror and your leading mm-hmm. indicators are what's out in front of you through the windshield. So yeah, that's a great analogy. Future. Yeah. That's a great, great, great analogy. I should have just let you give that first. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, you know, when I think about that, I think about some of the strategic conversations I've had. I mean, both at Lisi with some of our clients, but certainly at, you know, the Amlaw 100 firm where we both were, you know, what are the best resources and technologies that are going to be able to help us, you know, give us the the tools and information we need to be able to more effectively engage in business development strategies or marketing strategies to bring in, you know, um, interest and to attract new clients. And, and here's where I'm going to say too, and I wanted to say this at the outset, here's the thing. I will never argue with a lawyer or a firm or lawyers, whatever, who say the biggest source of my business development is my relationships, I, my referral network and my relationships. I 1000% agree with you. And I've said this on multiple different podcasts and presentations on multiple different topics, because it all comes down to ultimately, how are we get, how, how are we creating more at bats for the attorneys? And so, yes, I believe you, I agree with you, Mr. or Ms. Attorney, that your, your business development is coming from um, your referral network. But what we're trying to do and the leading indicators we're trying to look at are what can we set up for you or what processes can we as a marketing department implement so that it is more efficient for you to get in front of those referrals, your network, so on and so forth more frequently, thereby creating the opportunities that give you increased business development opportunities. I'm yes. rambling at this point, but <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, referrals will likely be the top for most lawyers, law firms, whatever it might be. But I, I always like to add, it's great. Let's keep those referrals. Let's, you know, how can we improve that process, whatever that might be, but how can we get additional business that maybe isn't through referrals? Think about all the other ways you could possibly get business. Right. And that's, yes. you know, you know, that's something that leading indicators could help with in terms of, you know, if we if if we tweak this here, we could, you know, get other business this way or whatever it might be. Yeah. So let's talk about a couple specific things. Like I know SEO is is certainly your your baby, um, at least as far as here at Lisi. So what are some of the leading indicators, if we're talking about a focus on search engine optimization as a strategic priority, what are some of the leading indicators that law firm leaders might look at? And what are some of the lagging indicators um, that we as marketers might look at, but um, also might be presenting output data to firm leadership? Yeah, certainly. So some of the leading ones, so what's ahead of us or how can I improve the amount of content that I'm putting out? What's that process? What's the content production process look like? Do I need to improve the amount of time the approvals take? Do I need to get more writers doing this? Do I need to filter it down to associates to write out the first draft and then up to the higher level partners and things like that so that the production process is a little bit faster? Because content at the end of the day is what's going to help move the needle on SEO. Because you can have a website, uh, but with no content on your website, Google's not going to index it. That's a whole other story for another podcast. Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, and then another one might be like, okay, what are our online competitors doing? So the Addis Martin Law Firm, we might know that um, Lisi Ackerman is a competitor of ours, right? They're right down the road, or they might be across the building in center city. Right. But when I pull up, when somebody pulls up a Google search, Google doesn't determine your competitors like that. 
Google determines your competitors by who's talking about the same things that you're talking about. So you might be an insurance attorney for something or, or something when you Google something related to insurance, you know, you might articles from something like State Farm or Farmers Insurance might come up. Those are technically like your online organic competitors because they're talking about the same subject matter that you're talking about. And SEO is about subject matter and content and things like that. So those are kind of two leading indicators, if that makes sense. A lagging indicator, I like to get a set of keywords from the law firm lawyers and say, okay, here I did the research on what your online competitor is doing, what keywords I think you should be ranking for. Here's a list of, let's say, 200. Can you whittle this down to 100 that you think are really important to you that you want to see your when you type that search firm term into Google, you want to see your firm ranking for. So when that list is exchanged between me and the law firm or the lawyer, we start tracking that. So in month one, we might be on page two. But as we make, you know, SEO improvements and meta descriptions on page SEO, all that other stuff, tracking that month over month, how we going from spot 11 on Google, which is page two, to can we get to spot eight? And then can we get to spot four? Can we get to spot one? So it's tracking that month over month. So you can sort of see, okay, I'm moving the needle in terms of the terms that are important to me and getting higher in those Google search pages. Because as we touched on earlier, everybody says, I want to be on the first page of Google for everything that you know my law firm does. Yeah. That's sort of how I approach SEO and one tactic of how you would look at leading and lagging indicators. But let's do another one just to further illustrate the example and kind of solidify it in our audience's mind here. So let's talk about integrated marketing communication campaigns, Robin. Um, at least we offer outsourced legal marketing services, and we do a lot of things for a lot of different clients. But in terms of leading and lagging indicators for marketing communication campaigns, what would you say some of those might be? Yeah, I mean, the the biggest one in terms of like, a you know, again, looking through the the windshield, you're looking at what's coming down the road towards us. Mm -hmm. um, how much time does it take from concept to completion? And actually, this might be the one that I focus on exclusively for this, because if we're thinking about an integrated marketing communications campaign, I'm not talking like SCOTUS releases a decision and we write a legal alert. That's fine. That's that's a great thing to do. I'm talking about we have set a strategic goal of growing a specific practice. And so what are all of the communications components and digital marketing tactics that we need to weave into the strategy and deploy in a integrated way to help um, drive broader brand awareness and ultimately, um, you know, create opportunities like I was talking about before for existing or new contacts and potential clients to discover the service and the firm. So concept to completion time is a big leading indicator of how successful a firm can and will be <laughs> in terms of executing this strategic goal. And this, and I use this one because it's a big thing that a lot of firms are talking about all the time, whatever the firm is focused on, you know, how do we, how do they continue to expand their practice and, or add a new practice and continue to increase their market share, right? Like that's what every firm's trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would argue that a huge leading indicator of their success in achieving that goal is how long it takes, how much time it takes them to actually say, hey, we're going to do this. We want to build a marketing campaign to support this and actually get it off and running. Because, um, you know, we in this industry are very good at overcomplicating things. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, if it is um, something that the idea happens and it's sort of blessed by whoever needs to approve the you know, moving forward with it, but it takes us four to six months to actually get something off the ground. We are losing ground um, every second, you know, every, right. every sort of minute that goes by is, is wasted time as opposed to if we can create sort of like a waterfall project management approach um, or strategy to, or at, you know, agile or whatever the right, <laughs> sorry, 
as opposed to if we could create an agile project management approach to it, where we are executing and refining in an iterative and combined way as we go forward with it. So that is one way I would say the most important leading indicator of our marketing strategy is um, how long it actually takes us to get something out the door. And then the lagging indicator and in related to that, you know, what um, what is the customer acquisition cost? What is the, um, you know, a, a little bit, again, going tying back to the um, ROI of it, but also like what is the revenue growth that we're seeing sort of coming out of this this integrated marketing campaign? So I, I, it's interesting to really think about it from this perspective of leading and lagging indicators, because I think if we can socialize, not just we here at Lisi, but we as legal marketers can sort of socialize this concept, I think it's a really strong footing and foundation um, that marketing, upon which marketing leaders can drive the conversation in a way that I think will resonate with lawyers, you know, the lawyers who are leading these law firms, um, because it's not just about, yes, we got X amount of output. And what does that tell us? It's if you want to be able to grow revenue, we need the processes and tools in place to do it more efficiently. And it has the potential to increase, you know, by X percent, even if you're mm -hmm. sort of like projecting based on broad industry data. Okay. Right. Again, Soapbox, very excited about it. So let's, pu let's pull this all together and talk about how do we build um, queryable data um, in order to get us to that point where we can sort of beautiful mind style, look at the information and sort of extrapolate a story. Right. Um, why is that? Why is it important? Let's start with the why here, Dan. Why is it important to be able to do this um, in order to have this data set? And what are the resources? I'm, I'm, le I'm asking a leading question here. <laughs> but what team is really important for us to be able to collaborate with on this? Well, so I think it's interesting because, you know, we're talking about these leading and lagging indicators and all I hear, I hear data points and all the, you know, look at this particular data point and tell me how I can forecast that into growth. All these are data points, which means all these things require data. So these things might be in um, different systems and, you know, some things might be in Google Analytics, some things might be in your CRM, some things might be, you know, in a random Excel spreadsheet somewhere, right? Um, to me, you need, we need to strive as legal marketers and we need to team up with uh, one of my favorite departments at any law firm or company, <laughs> the IT department, to work to pull all that data together because, you know, I'm not the, a huge fan of data being in silos because it just causes more time when you're kind of data wrangling and pulling everything together in an Excel, spread, Excel spreadsheet at the end of the month just to look at it and then you get to do it all over again at the same time. If you team up with somebody in your IT department, they can help you kind of with that data governance and data handling of, okay, can we get, they probably have a data lake or data warehouse or something they can pour everything into and kind of help you build something that is more easily queryable, more flexible than an Excel spreadsheet, allows you to kind of your favorite thing, pivot table mm -hmm. and run some queries. Um, and even being so flexible, you can use that to do forecasts and things like that, rather than wasting, you know, eight to 10 hours a month pulling all the data from 17 different systems. And then it just gets lost in an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, I, I I also big fan of the uh, IT department. Some of my closest professional relationships have have and friends have come from the IT teams um, at the firms where I've worked. Um, so I'm I'm fully in support of that point. And I will just do a little plug for I recently contributed an article for LMA's strategies and voices um, online magazine about how to you know foster communication and build relationships between marketing and IT because exactly to your point, Dan, um, they are the best people in my humble opinion to have in your corner in terms of getting the information, you know, access to the information that you want um, in order to be able to help you make strategic leadership level decisions. So right. totally agree. 
Right. They're, they're good at the IT. They're good at data. They're good. You're good at marketing. They're good at IT. It's okay to team up. You don't have to do everything. Well, and I think too, you know, one of the common challenges I've seen is, and really this is just to, the whole point of my um, article actually is, the biggest challenge that I see is a breakdown in communication and more specifically sort of um, a lack of transparency. So, mm -hmm. you know, I say that my superpower is finding a way to yes. So I come into a conversation in general, but especially with like IT saying, okay, here are the seven things I need to be able to accomplish. What's possible? How could we work together? Right. And if initially faced with a wall or so essentially the word no, my question doesn't become, how do I work around you? Then it's, okay, what does it look like if we were to work together to make this happen? What is reasonable? How can we actually achieve this? Um, you know, because sometimes it is just about competing priorities or competing resource availability and so on Certainly. and so forth, right? Like, and again, I'm going down a, uh, like the 17th rabbit hole of this conversation, but it, I do think it's a really valid point because again, coming back to looking at marketing analytics through a law firm leadership lens. If I'm a leader and the answer is, well, I didn't get what I needed from IT, my expectation is you, you should have figured out how to get what you need, right? Like <laughs> yeah. how figure out how to communicate with them. So just to sort of tie it all together again. And I will tell you, I know um, Dan knows this. So in our previous firm, we had a data warehouse that was actually built by the executive director, um, but it was fully queryable and it was all of the time and matter and billing information across the firm. Um, you know, it was obviously very limited in terms of who had access to it, but when we were able to access the information, just pulling out trends and sort of um, horizon scanning and using it to identify gaps in client service? Where were their opportunities? What impact was maybe one practice area having on the op the ability of other practice areas or service lines to be able to get a toehold into a, a client, so on and so forth? It was just like, I'm genuinely giddy actually like talking about this because it was just <laughs> so exciting having access to that information, which I have since learned from colleagues at other firms is like light years away from what they've had access to. And it really made a big difference, you know? So just looking at access to data is, is a very, very critical component of being able to effectively present to firm leadership in terms of marketing analytics. Right. So um, if, if you're still with us at this point, <laughs> 30 minutes in. Um, I, you know, I would say the biggest takeaways here are think about it. Um, when you're thinking about marketing data, whatever level you're at in your department, you know, especially if you, you are a person who, who hopes to ascend the ranks within your marketing department. Um, think about it from what is the story I'm trying to tell? What is the big picture here? What is the, you know, what are the one or two things that I really need to pull out of this information and craft a story around because it actually makes, it will make an impact on leadership when I present this information. Um, we haven't even talked about vanity metrics and I won't take us down another rabbit hole, but all that output data I said earlier, it is important. It is interesting information, but it's not actually easy to pull insights from that in a way that law firm leadership understands like, okay, here's the, here's the impact it's going to make. And when I say understand, they'll understand <laughs> the impact, but the, it's the challenge is like how long it's going to take to steer the ship in a new direction. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas the leading indicators sort of what are the efficiencies, the processes, the protocols that we have or need and what impact will that have on the output? And by extension, you know, the, ultimately the things that we're looking towards revenue growth and market share, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, hey, Dan, thanks for uh, asking me to get super nerdy and <laughs> nobody will ever want to talk to me again if they actually listen to this and be like, oh, God, Rob is going to come talk about marketing data again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to avoid you at all the LMA conferences. <laughs> I mean, I, they pretty much do already. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. And um, 
thanks for, I don't know, since we're both sort of hosting this, thanks for co-hosting this with me, Dan. Yeah, go team. (laughs) Go team. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Have a great week and make sure to um, subscribe to the podcast and follow our uh, almost every week live streams on LinkedIn, which are also replayed as uh, podcast episodes. This summer, we're doing a best of our 10 best LinkedIn live streams since we started them at early on some point in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic when we still wanted everybody to see our face. Uh, we have some really exciting episodes that we're um, having fun bringing out of the archives and and sharing over uh LinkedIn again this summer. So be sure to tune into those and um, follow us on social media and stay connected. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. You have been listening to All the Things, the podcast from Legal Internet Solutions Incorporated, where we bring you all the things. Whether it's three things we learned, hearing from a legal marketing insider, an Ask Me Anything session, or that one more thing we've been dying to tell you all month long, but couldn't. That's all the things. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you get your podcasts. And you can join us for the live events every Friday at 1230 Eastern on our LinkedIn channel for our live stream where we bring you all the things live. Live.